Good afternoon, Fulton community, and thank you for joining us for this edition of Fulton First. Uh, I wanted to start off this month by talking about some of the events we have happening throughout the city in our parks. First and foremost, I met with an Eagle Scout yesterday who took it upon himself to do a project at our North Bay Trails. He built a lookout point, which is amazing. It looks great on the trails and is really quite an enhancement. So I hope everyone's able to get out to the North Bay Trails and check this lookout point out. We're gonna have a press release and more information on that to come. We are also working with AmeriCorps and the County Youth Bureau to bring free programs to our parks. Those are, I think we're in our second or third week of those programs. They're going very well, they're well attended, and we're looking forward to those continuing through the end of the summer. We're also going to be bringing a free basketball clinic, which is a basketball and more clinic to the community. This will involve not only basketball techniques and skills, but also uh, other activities. And all of these programs are being done with strict COVID guidelines and making sure that everyone is safe and that all protocols are followed um, to make sure that the experience is not only enjoyable and fun, but a safe experience for all. We've continued our strong partnership with Friends of Fulton Parks and are working with them on various projects through uh, several parks in the community this summer. One of those being Patrick Park, we're working with them um, on some enhancements that are gonna happen with the playground equipment. We're also down at Rec Park, Friends of Fulton uh, have made some improvements to the to the fountain that's down there. And so that should be up and running if you wanna go check that out right behind the War Memorial at Rec Park. It's a nice little addition um, as you're out walking to take a little break and enjoy the fountain. And then at Bullhead Point, we're working with the Rotary Club and Friends of Fulton Park to bring handicap accessible picnic tables to Bullhead Point. Those are on order and we will be installing those here soon. So I look forward to seeing those and we look forward to our community having more opportunities to enjoy that area. We also have our Splash Park that is in its final phases. We're almost done with it and looking forward to getting that ready so that we can finally, after two very long years of waiting for that park to be open to our community and to the taxpayers, we are gonna have that park open this summer and we're excited for that. Uh, more information to follow, we should have that uh, up and going, hopefully uh, next week. In terms of other community enhancements and neighborhood initiatives that are that are ongoing, we're continuing the Light Up Fulton initiative and um, as it's underway in the neighborhoods through uh, Fulton Block Builders and the Pride Grants that the neighborhoods can apply for, the City of Fulton is also looking to light up areas that have been dark for a long time. And one of those areas includes our downtown. If you go to downtown area, you'll see that there's lamps that haven't been lit for a long time. And that's not safe. And it certainly is not appealing. And we have businesses down there who deserve to have a well lit up area, community members, patrons, pedestrians who deserve to have a well lit up area so that they feel safe and comfortable doing business in our downtown. So you'll see crews out and about started today and they are working on getting those poles lit up again and um, improving that overall uh, experience down there. So be looking for that as well uh, over the next week or so they'll be working on that. I am in the process of creating a neighborhood action task force in collaboration with some community members, our police, code, and fire departments because it's time to start addressing these blighted, rundown neighborhoods, neighborhoods that have increased crime and start taking back our community. I know that we're all frustrated. I'm frustrated. There are certainly obstacles in our way. The bail reform law does not help us. With COVID, it put some obstacles in front of us. And we have challenges that are certainly going to hinder some of that work that we do. But I promise you this, we are taking a very active approach in starting to deal with these vacant properties, zombie properties, these absentee uh, landlords and slum lords, people who don't care about our community and are only interested in collecting a rent check. 
that's not who Fulton is, is and not who we're going to be. We're going to start addressing these issues uh, one step at a time, one action at a time, and we're gonna do it collaboratively and we're gonna do it right. I hear what all of you are saying and I agree with you wholeheartedly that we have an issue here in Fulton. We have a beautiful community and it's time we take it back. And I am completely dedicated to doing that. So this Neighborhood Action Task Force is going to be a collaborative effort of how we get into these neighborhoods and take a proactive approach to flushing this activity out and cleaning up our, cleaning up our city. As part of that process in the codes department, I've been updating the community regularly on changes that are being made and enhancements that are being made to the codes department. The most recent is the enhancements to the rental process. I learned early on that the process of obtaining a rental permit didn't work, quite frankly. It just didn't work. And there was no accountability on the property owner. So what we've done is we've improved the process. We now have a rental application and a packet that informs the uh, property owner, lets them know what it is that the city expects out of them as property owners and how they can be held accountable, including fees and penalties and so on. It also has a very comprehensive application that's now included so that good information is being communicated, but also it's requiring the tenants, or excuse me, the landlords to sign off on that, that they understand the process. So I'm proposing this new packet uh, rental process to come forward. And in addition to that, I'm proposing that we increase rental fees and we decrease the rental permit from five years down to three years. We have to be more involved. We have to engage more. We can't wait five years to do uh, rental inspections. We're also going to work with the Community Development Agency and our housing department over there who are already going into these homes and doing inspections. We should be collaborating and working together to make sure that we are making sure that these living conditions are up to code and that we're all working from the same set of rules, the same set of guidelines, and we're working together to clean up our neighborhoods. So you'll see that coming up here at the next Common Council meeting, um, the proposals that we are um, making for this, for this rental process. I am very happy to report that we are going to have a quality of life patrol. I have hit the go and, and approved the quality of life patrol initiative with our police department. We are going to have officers out in the neighborhoods. At times, there'll be officers walking up and down the neighborhoods, talking to community members, asking them what their concerns are, pointing out where the issues are and what we need to do to better police our community. We'll also be taking on other initiatives that fall under the Quality of Life Patrol where we'll see officers out and about. Some of them may be plainclothes officers, and they'll be out with the, with the intent to find where the troubled areas are and what we can do to clean up these neighborhoods. How can we flush out this activity by making it very clear that we are being proactive, we are in the neighborhoods, and we are ready to move this city forward to be a safe place to raise our families, to be a great city to do business in, to be a great city to continue to live in. We want people to visit here. We want families to be proud of where they're from. We want everyone to feel safe in the city of Fulton. This quality of life patrol is just the next step to help us get there. And they will be working collaboratively with the drug task force, codes department, and the fire department to make sure that we are working together on these initiatives because it takes all of us to work together, not to work in silos, but to come together for once and for all and make sure we're all on the same page in, a try, in, in, in accomplishing the same goals. So that's the next step that's happening um, in the neighborhoods. So again, just to recap that, we are going to be having a neighborhood action task force. We will continue with Light Up Fulton. 
we are improving the rental process and looking at increasing fees and decreasing the amount of time in between rental inspections. We're improving our code uh, enforcement and getting more code officers out there and actually enforcing the laws that are on the books. And we have a quality of life patrol that uh, has been initiated this week to be uh, in effect. So you'll start seeing more PD out in the neighborhoods and you'll see more codes department uh, employees out in the neighborhoods and you're gonna see more of a collaborative effort to clean up our city. Finally, in terms of animal control, we are moving animal control forward. Anyone can call City Hall. I want to apologize for the mixed message that's out there. While we do not have an animal control officer, we are going to have animal control services. And I'm doing this in a way to help save the taxpayer dollars, but not take away the services. So we are going to roll out a plan that will continue to provide services to our community, but will cost our taxpayers less. We are saving the taxpayer dollars because we have found a way to do business differently without compromising the services that you have come to appreciate. So be on the lookout for more information on animal control services. In the meantime, if you want to call my office, 315-592-7330, or call the police department, uh, the non-emergency number, you can reach them and we will guide you through that animal control process. I want to thank you. It has been a very busy seven months. It has been a trying seven months. And this community has come together I say it time and time again, this community is strong. We are resilient and we are ready to move forward. I wish COVID didn't happen. We all wish COVID didn't happen, but the reality is, is that's where we're at. And yes, it puts some delays on projects that I would have rather have started three, four, five months ago, but I wasn't able to do that. But that doesn't mean we didn't stop working behind the scenes. That's why these programs are ready to be rolled out because we kept working and we kept finding ways to do business better. That's why we're gonna have credit card services here in the next couple weeks. The machines are on their way and being shipped to me as we speak. That's why we're able to roll out a quality of life patrol or improve our code enforcement or bring free programs to our youth because we kept working. And that's my promise to you, regardless of what hurdles in front of us, whether it be COVID or any other hurdle that's in front of us, I'm gonna keep working. And my teams are gonna keep working. For you, the community, for the taxpayers, for the people who wanna visit here and live here, work here, do business here, I promise you we're gonna keep working and you will continue to see results because your happiness, your safety, and your well-being in the city of Fulton is what's most important. Thank you all for joining me today for another month of Fulton First. I look forward to seeing you next month.